Hi everyone, welcome to the third instalment of Cooking with Kane. Now if you've got any leftover curry from the last recipe, then this is the perfect way to use it as a leftover. We're going to be making a chicken curry biryani. So like before, what we're going to need is some rice and some water. So three ounces of rice per person, 150 mils of water per person. Now this is my dad's secret recipe, so hopefully he's okay with me sharing it with you. Once you've got your rice and your water measured out, what you're going to need to do is find the smallest hob on your cooker. What we're going to do is add the rice to a non-stick pan, we're going to add the water, we're going to pop a little bit of salt in there, and then we're going to give it a stir, and then we're going to turn the hob on. So what we need to do firstly is that we need to put the hob on the highest heat that we can. For this you're also going to need to try and find a saucepan lid with no holes in it. Don't worry if your saucepan lid has got a hole in it, you can get a little bit of kitchen paper, roll it up and bung it in the little hole. This makes sure all the water steams nicely inside of the pan and it makes it really fluffy. So we're going to boil our rice up until you can see some bubbles at the top. Now this is really important, we don't want to keep bubbling it up and on high heat. We're going to need to turn the heat down after one final stir. So this final stir is really important so nothing sticks to the pan. So we're going to turn our heat to the lowest possible and then we're going to stick our lid on like so and then we're going to put the timer on for 13 minutes so this gives us a little bit of time 13 minutes in fact to get everything else sorted so you can see how quick this meal is to prepare I've got a naan bread I've grated 100 grams of cheddar cheese and all I'm going to do is put the cheese on top and spread it out nicely then it's down to the leftover curry. I'm going to add about 200 mils of water. This is a really important part of the process because we don't want the curry to dry out whilst we heat it up and then any excess water left over, the rice is going to come in and take it all up anyway. So steam will be coming out of your pan. This is a good sign. Don't worry if you can see some steam coming out. Keep on stirring your curry. It's going to reduce down slightly. Once your timer is done, what we're going to need to do is turn the heat off, take it off the heat and leave it for one more minute. This means the rice won't stick to the bottom of your pan. So once the rice is done, make sure you try and get all some excess water from the lid inside of your rice. And now we're going to have a look at how fluffy and steamed up this rice is. Looks good to me. I think we're ready to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop all of that rice into our pan of curry and then all we need to do is stir it up. Make sure all of the rice is covered with the curry and like I said earlier that excess water the rice is going to take it on During that time, the garlic bread went in, and this had six minutes. Back to our curry, you can see all the water is soaked into the rice and it looks really nice. And then all we need to do is serve it up. Jobs are good and really, really quick, really easy, and it's super tasty because all the leftover flavors from that curry has had a day to get stronger. It's really nice. Hi, yeah, so during these times we want to make sure that we don't waste any food and this recipe is perfect for any leftovers. It can be done with any curry, it's really tasty, really quick as you can see and it doesn't take any time at all. 
I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I enjoyed making it. It was really tasty. Enjoyed eating it. Hopefully we're going to be back to normal soon so we can start cooking this at on up. Keep active, keep healthy, keep making some tasty meals and more importantly stay safe.